Okay. I don't have a hammer? No. No gavel. Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone for their patience as we moved from uh, City Hall to the 16th floor. Uh, the zoning and franchise hearing was going over. So I, again, I appreciate all your patience. I want to thank the Sergeant in Arms, who's activated this room in less than five minutes. So I want to thank Ralph Perez. Thank you so much for your help. Um, also, yes. <laughs> also, so want to congratulate and uh, happy birthday to Councilmember Fernando Cabrera of the committee. So thank you so much. We, we, we got him some nice birthday it, presents. Exactly. <laughs> so the Department of Sanitation has given you two bags instead of one. Uh, <laughs> and a birthday lottery ticket. There you go. Hi. Um. There you go. <laughs> yes. And, and Councilmember Chaim Deutsch's birthday was yesterday. Turned on. Yeah, so congratulations. A lot of birthdays, so I just want to thank everyone again. Now we're in a festive mood, so the mood is up. Uh, so good afternoon, and thank you for being here today. I am Councilmember Antonio Reynoso, the chair of the Committee on Sanitation. Welcome to the hearing. Uh, on introduction, sponsored by Councilmembers Brad Lander, Margaret Chin, uh, Traeger, and myself to enact a fee for carry-out paper bags. The Department of Sanitation estimates around 10 billion, billion with a B, single-use bags, or some 100 tons, 100,000 tons of paper and plastic bags are used and discarded in the city per year, costing the city roughly 12 million per year in sanitation costs. But these costs go far beyond dollars and cents. Bags cause immeasurable harm in our environment when introduced into our waste stream. Plastic bags clog recycling machines and can contaminate recyclable materials. When plastic bags are not properly disposed of, they can clog sewers and storm drains as well as accumulate in the oceans where they threaten marine life. And many of these bags are simply ending up in landfills where they contribute to the ever-growing crisis of climate change. We simply cannot wait any longer to take bold action on climate. Our solutions need to match the urgency of the problem. The bill we are hearing today is a meaningful first step in moving our city towards a green future. New York State has taken the important step of banning this use of single-use plastic bags. Although I want to note that they were late to the party, the city council took action on bags years ago, only to have the governor swoop in and block the law. We're glad they've made the decision to join the fight against climate change. The state has also authorized municipalities to pass local legislation requiring vendors to charge fi a five-cent fee for paper bags. The bill we are hearing today is New York, City's opting in New York City opting into that fee. Banning plastic bags alone can lead to consumers to simply switch to paper bags and will likely achieve very little reduction in overall waste. It also can increase costs for retailers as paper is more expensive than plastic and the city, and for the city, as paper is heavier than plastic bags and would increase the cost of recycling facilities or shipment and landfill. According to DSNY, the city currently captures about 25% of all paper bags and recycling. Between the different sources of paper bags, grocery bags, Grocery bags have the highest capture rate of 45%. This means that more than half of the paper grocery bags in the city are being sent to landfill. As a city, we need to take zero waste goals seriously. We cannot achieve zero waste if we simply change the use of single-use plastic bags to single-use paper bags. We need to encourage the use of reusable bags. Ultimately, this is a small change in how we carry goods from place to place that will have a major positive impact on our environment. I understand the perception that this is an additional financial burden for city residents and hope that people don't end up paying the fee. Rather, 
We are urging people to switch to reusable bags like these beautiful orange ones from the Department of Sanitation, which the city will be distributing in the coming months. While it is critically important that we all recycle, we must remember that it is the last of the three R's, the first two being reduce and reuse. We must go much further towards actually reducing the amount of waste we all create. As New Yorkers, we need to challenge ourselves to think long and hard about our consumption habits, keeping in mind that our decisions have real-world consequences for the future health of our planet. Today's hearing is merely the start of a much broader conversation that I want us to have in the coming months about how we can truly get serious about reducing the amount of waste we create. An incremental approach will not suffice, and if we're going to be successful in saving our planet, we have to think big and we have to take and we have to take bold progressive action now. I look forward to hearing from DSNY, environmental advocates, and other interested groups and individuals about this important bill. I'd like to acknowledge we've been joined by Valone, Espinal, Deutsch, Chen, uh, Cabrera, and Lander. Um, and now I want to uh, invite Councilmember Chen to give an opening statement, followed by Councilmember Lander. Thank you, Chair Renoso, for holding this important hearing and I'm excited to join the Sanitation Committee. Um, a few years ago, our council embarked on an environmental effort that many thought was impossible. When Council Member Lander and I passed legislation in 2016 to dramatically reduce single-use plastic bag waste, we were working against a well-funded misinformation campaign by the plastic bag industry who sought to hide the true cost of plastic bag from New Yorkers. But we knew then, as we know now, that plastic bags are not free. There's a cost, and it's borne unfairly by low-income communities of color who have to deal with the effects of transporting thousands of tons of plastic bag waste every year. I'm pleased that after preempting our local law, the state has allowed a sensible measure to limit the use of plastic bags. Finally, we can see a future where clogged storm drain, polluted waterways, and parkland riddled with non-biodegradable bag waste is not the norm. But our work is not over yet. To ensure that the flimsy plastic bag is not merely replaced by paper, or worse yet, a thicker plastic bag, we must act to impose a modest fee on these and other single-use bags. Neither paper nor plastic waste is good for the environment, especially when it's everyday New Yorkers that pay the cost of transporting this waste, including negative health effects that leave our children most at risk. Our legislation mandates multilingual education so that all communities and small businesses will be prepared. A dedicated fund to distribute free reusable bags like this to low-income New Yorkers and exemptions for residents on SNAP and the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program. We have already seen other states and countries set a global model to fight plastic pollution. It's time for New York to do the same. And thanks to my colleague Brad Lander and a diverse coalition of advocates for your partnership all these years, I look forward to today's hearing and hope my colleagues will join us and support this crucial environmental measure. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Chin. Councilmember Brad Lander. Thank you, Chair Reynoso. Uh, happy birthday, Councilmember Cabrera. Congratulations, Councilmember Chin and Reynoso and all the other sponsors. This is a, a really good day. Um, since the day about three years ago that this council passed a bill to put a five cent fee on bags, New Yorkers have sent, uh, sent approximately 30 billion single-use plastic bags to landfills, about 300,000 pounds of solid waste. Um, that's the opportunity that we've lost, but I'm going to focus today on what we've gained, uh, which is a chance to move forward with really strong legislation. And I'm, uh, as Council Members Chin and Reynoso said, the fact that the state took action here to ban plastic bags statewide is a great step forward. But we have both a real challenge and an opportunity. We cannot allow people to switch just from throwaway carry out single use plastic bags to throwaway carry out single use paper bags. Unfortunately, most of them don't get recycled. They're heavier by weight, which means more of them actually would be on garbage trucks moving through low-income communities of color, and we would pay more to tip them into landfills since they would weigh more than plastic bags. So better not to have them in our trees and storm drains and not made from petroleum, but still lots of problems presented. There's also, though, a really nice opportunity here. 
There are many ways in which this single-use carry-out bag is a symbol of the kind of bad habits that we have gotten in as a species. We are not thinking as stewards of the planet, and the ways that we dispose waste that we just don't need is a really good example. Everyone is capable, everyone across, doesn't matter your race, your income, your family size, your religion, uh, your age, or whether you even care about the environment or not, everyone is capable of bringing reusable bags to the store when you go shopping. On a daily basis, we remember our wallet and our keys and our Metro cards. Usually when it's raining, we can remember an umbrella. We are capable of remembering to bring reusable bags when we shop and not to need to send billions and billions of bags to landfills just because we have gotten into wasteful, careless habits. Um, and that's what this five cent fee helps us all do. And the data is clear. We've waited a long time to adopt, but as a result, we've got data from Washington DC and California and Ireland and Israel and many countries in Africa as well. A modest fee helps the vast majority of people across all those lines of income and race and class and gender and age and religion and family size uh, and ideology to remember to bring reusable bags when we go to the store. We all can do it, and when we all start doing it, we will be contributing to a significant reduction of solid waste in our city. Um, it is uh, really a great day. I want to say a big thank you to the folks that have been partners in helping get us here, all the council members who have been big supporters. Um, council Member Espinal has been a big champion getting rid of plastic. Council members on this committee, Valone, Chin, Reynoso, Cabrera, all big supporters. The Department of Sanitation has been a great champion in this work, and we're grateful for your partnership um, and the advocates who have been fighting with us every step of the way to uh, PlasticBagLoss.org and NRDC and Citizens Committee for the Environment and Citizens Committee for New York City and NILPI and New York League of Conservation Voters and Citizen Committee for New York City. It is a dynamite coalition and partnership um, that has not given up. And sometimes when you don't give up, eventually you get there. So it's a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Brad Landon. Congratulations again. Um, now we have uh, uh, Deputy Commissioner of my favorite office within the Department of Sanitation, um, Recycling and Sustainability, uh, D. Bridget Anderson. And we also have Assistant Commissioner for Policy and External Affairs, uh, D. Gregory Anderson. Doesn't sound as good, um, but we have to swear you in, Greg. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony today and to answer council member questions honestly? I do. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. And good afternoon, Chair Reynoso, members of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management. I am Bridget Anderson, Deputy Commissioner for the Bureau of Recycling and Sustainability for the Department. I am here with Gregory Anderson, no relation, very nice guy, um, Assistant Commissioner um, for Policy and External Affairs. Uh, first, we would like to welcome Council Member Chin to the committee. Very excited to work with you um, on matters related to our important work to keep New York City healthy, safe, and clean. Thank you for this opportunity to testify today and to comment on the reduction of paper carryout bag use in New York City as contemplated by the pre-considered introduction under consideration today. I will provide some opening remarks after which we are happy to answer your questions. Uh, New York City residents, commuters, visitors use and discard approximately 10 billion single-use carryout bags annually. These bags make up about 2.5% of our waste stream, and on average, the department collects more than 1,700 tons of single-use carryout bags per week. That's over 91,000 tons of plastic and paper carryout bags every year. These products, particularly lightweight, single-use plastic carryout bags, are a major contributor to marine and roadway litter. Single-use plastic bags often end up blowing into the streets and onto the branches of trees, creating unsightly street litter. When rain carries them into catch basins, they pollute the city's surrounding waterways, posing a threat to marine animals that often mistake these bags as a food source. Additionally, carryout bags contained in metal, glass, and plastic loads delivered to the city's recycling contractor, Sims Municipal Recycling, often jam the sorting equipment at their facility, causing processing delays during the cleaning and repair of the sorting equipment. They are quite literally a blight on our city. Reusable carryout bags, like the ones we have provided for you here today, can be used dozens or hundreds of times, can be made um, from nearly 100% recycled products, and do not litter our trees, parks, waterways, and beaches. 
We are here today to celebrate strong and far overdue action to reduce the use of single-use carryout plastic bags in New York State and to take these measures further by reducing the use of single-use paper bags as well. City and state governments have taken the lead across America to address the proliferation of single-use carryout bags. Several other jurisdictions in New York and across the country, including Washington, D.C., San Francisco, Seattle, Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, and many others, have also passed reform legislation to curtail the distribution of carryout bags. In 2016, the state of California became the first state in the nation to enact a statewide ban on single-use carryout bags and a 10-cent fee on paper, compostable, and reusable bags. The city of New York, an international leader in urban sustainability, is pleased to join these other cities and the state of California by supporting the passage and enactment of today's bill that will help decrease the use of single-use paper bags, reducing disposal costs, and contributing to our goal of sending zero waste to landfills by 2030. New York City has supported meaningful single-use carryout bag reform for years as part of our efforts to send zero waste to landfills. In 2008, the city enacted Local Law 1, which required retailers who offer single-use plastic carryout bags to provide collection and recycling programs. That law was preempted by the state film plastic recycling program, which though less aggressive than the city's law, did make plastic bag recycling available in large chain and retail um, stores across the state. In May 2016, the City Council passed Local Law 63 of 2016 after more than two years of consultation with advocates and stakeholders on all sides of the issue. Local Law 63, which was later modified by Local Law 1 of 2016, imposed a five cent fee on almost all carryout bags, including both paper and plastic, provided by most stores in New York City. The law included exemptions for certain types of bags and for bags provided to SNAP and WIC recipients. It also required the Department of Sanitation to conduct outreach about the fee and distribute reusable bags to residents across the city. In particular, to residents in, low, in households below 200% of the federal poverty line and in certain police precincts. The city carryout bag fee would have reduced the use of carryout bags by 60 to 75% based on the experiences of other jurisdictions that imposed a similar fee. However, just before the fee was to take effect in February 2017, New York State blocked the implementation of the city's carryout bag fee. The state law invalidated the city law and placed a temporary moratorium on the enactment of additional carryout bag fees in New York City, while leaving similar legislation in place in Suffolk County and the town of Long Beach, among others. Two weeks ago, as part of the 2020 budget, the state legislature passed a near nearly total ban on single-use plastic carryout bags with the strong support of the governor. After two years following the blocking of the city law, we are excited to see the state take strong and, strong and comprehensive action. Moreover, the budget legislation, which the governor signed last Friday, allows individual counties and municipalities to opt in to a five cent fee on paper bags by passing local legislation. Like the 2016 city law, the state law minimizes hardship on low-income and fixed-income individuals by exempting recipients of SNAP and WIC from the five-cent fee. The opt-in provision essentially shifts the responsibility for imposing a fee onto local governments rather than the state. The paper carryout reduction fee, as required under, under the state bill, must be collected by businesses and remitted to the state New York State Department of Taxation and Finance. Forty percent of all monies collected in each locality will be returned to the fiscal officer of that locality to purchase and distribute free reusable bags with priority given in to distribution in low and fixed income communities. The department is pleased that the sponsors, the chair, and this committee have so quickly moved to act on this important policy. The committee's pre-considered introduction before us today will minimize the negative environmental impacts associated with paper carryout bags. The bill requires city retailers to charge a five cent fee per paper carryout bag to most consumers at the point of sale and requires retailers to itemize each bag fee on the customer's receipt, similar to the five cent bottle bill fee in place since the early 1980s. The law would take effect on March 1st, 2020, concurrent with the effective date of the state plastic bag ban. The department strongly supports this legislation, which will reduce single use carryout bag consumption in the city. This bill not only encourages bag reduction, but also promotes responsible re reuse to achieve our goal of diverting materials from the city's waste stream and reaching zero waste. In, implement in, in, in implementing this bill, 
The department will conduct robust outreach to covered businesses, notifying them of their obligations to collect the paper bag fee. The department will also conduct intensive outreach to residents in neighborhoods across New York City, ensuring that every New Yorker who wants a reusable bag can have one. Already, we have distributed more than 475,000 bags, um, and we will continue to do so. Any New Yorker who wants a reusable bag can fill out our zero waste pledge at nyc.gov slash zero waste pledge, and we will mail them a bag. We are also seeking organizations to partner with the department to expand our reach and to help us distribute reusable bags in neighborhoods across the city. Lastly, this effort to reduce the use of single-use products is just one in a series of steps that this administration has taken. In less than three months on July 1st, we will begin enforcement on the city's foam ban. Just last week, Mayor de Blasio signed an executive order requiring city agencies to develop plans to eliminate the use of single-use food service products, including plates, straws, cups, trays, and cutlery, by the end of the year. We will work with our partner agencies to help them switch to reusable or compostable alternatives, and we will ensure that supplies of plastic products are available in situations where they are necessary. We look forward to ongoing conversations with the Council regarding expanding that effort into the private sector, and we appreciate Councilmember Espinal and others for their leadership on this topic. Thank you for inviting the Department to share our thoughts with you this afternoon on this important subject, and we will gladly answer your questions, any questions that you may have. Thank you. I'm going to defer my time and uh, allow for the bill sponsors to ask questions first, followed by Councilmember Deutsch. So we'll start with Councilmember Chin, uh, then Councilmember Bradland, and then Councilmember Deutsch. So Councilmember Chin. Yes, I just have, thank you for the testimony, and I just have a brief um, question. Um, how many of these reusable bags have Department of Sanitation given out in the last couple of years? 475,000. 475,000. Yeah. Great. So how many more are you producing to, to give out? Um, before the, the bill is enacted? We have sure. about 75,000 um, already in inventory, and we're eager to partner with folks who would like to help us distribute those bags. And like I said, you can go online and, and mail you a bag. And we do intend to purchase additional bags. Um, we intend to do a similarly scaled distribution of bags um, over the next year. Thank you. We look forward to uh, doing that with the Department of Sanitation. Thank you. Councilmember Brad Lander. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just, the Chair spoke uh, in his opening statement to some of these issues of sort of the harms if we don't do this, if we just mm -hmm. people wind up switching to, to paper bags without reducing them. But I think it would be useful just to have you guys kind of speak to that on the record so we're clear why we're doing this. So um, the data that he gave that a, a substantial number, you know, uh, even a narrow majority of paper bags uh, don't wind up in the recycling stream but wind up being taken, you know, as part of regular garbage collection to landfills, that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are, we do a waste characterization study every few years, and what we've learned is that we capture about 45% of the grocery and non-food retail bags in recycling, the paper bags, um, but that means half of those paper bags are still winding up in landfills being thrown away. Some people do use them, you know, to containerized to carry their trash. Um, and then for carryout bags that are not covered by the fee, um, they are also um, ending up primarily in, in trash. And so this is a problem and this is something we want to reduce. And we have experience in other cities um, who have made the switch and, and issued the fee and um, they have seen a significant reduction. What's typical that happens is that if you do a pan ban on the plastic bags, um, there's a significant shift over to paper bags um, being provided by stores. And so by instituting a fee, you're then also reducing the use of those paper bags. And that's what we want to see. And that's been successful in other cities. So. Absolutely. And I, I saw in Suffolk, it's something, you know, something like more than a billion bags saved in the first year, re reduction yep. in use of yep. more than a billion bags in the first year since they put their five cent fee. So we yep. anticipate something even bigger since we're a much bigger place. Absolutely. And just to be clear, those 55% of paper bags that are winding up uh, in trash collection, um, we got to put them on trucks. They weigh more than plastic bags. We have to truck them through waste transfer stations, and we pay to tip them, right? Correct. How much do we do we pay? So what, what would you say is our average uh, for disposal this time? So our average tip fee is around $100 a ton. Okay. Uh, but when you think about a paper bag, it's, and I don't have the number in front of me, but it's probably something like 20, 30 times heavier than a thinner plastic bag. So even just changing one 
thin plastic bag or, or two double bagged plastic bags for one paper bag, you're moving to something much heavier. So that just immediately increases our costs. And that's what we've seen in places like Chicago that implemented a, a ban on the thin plastic bags uh, a few years ago. What they saw was exactly that substitution effect where you have heavier bags used instead of the thin bags and that causes problems uh, of a totally different scale. So Chicago, what they actually just did um, over the last year was implement a fee on all bags. <laughs> they actually repealed their, their ban, which um, some jurisdictions have done, some jurisdictions haven't. But this is what we've seen in San Francisco. They started with a ban, realized it wasn't, wasn't comprehensive, added a fee. Um, so that's you know, what, we're, what we're proud that we're doing all at once right here. Great. Um, thank you. Yeah, I, mean, I just think it's, you know, I, I wish what the state had done was done a ban and a fee statewide uh, because it's not a situation of like, oh, one might be better or the other might be better. The evidence is very clear. Without the fee, you get rid of the plastic, but people just massively switch to paper, and then we have all the consequences that you just described. And just for the record also, because I know you've looked at the evidence that once a fee is in place, the significant majority of people across all the different categories that we pay attention to start to bring reusable bags the majority of the time. Correct. It, it, it's, it's a behavior change. And, but we've found um, from the experiences of other cities that it, people are fairly quick to catch on and shift their behavior. Great. Um, thank you. Yeah, those are, those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Lander. Councilmember Deutsch. Are you sure, Chair, you want to hear from me? <laughs> okay. We love all voices. We empower all. So, <laughs> so firstly, I just want to say that I support zero waste, and I also support our environment. Um, but, you know, the few questions that I have is, is firstly, it's, if, it's not only a financial burden on individuals, but it becomes an extreme hardship. It's like I go shopping uh, for my family at times, and uh, we go shopping between me and my wife for seven people. Right, so when you walk into a supermarket, you need to you need to now carry these reusable bags, correct? So I have I think about five bags in each pocket, right? And I can't close my jacket. So my question is, is that how do you expect for larger families that need to go shopping for larger families um, to walk around? with 15 of the reusable bags. Again, I support that if someone goes uh, shopping for one individual, it's fine, or for two, or for three. Mm -hmm. But for larger families, I'm not carrying I, I think you're a bag around. Over here. <laughs> I am not carrying a bag around. You, you walk around with a cell phone. Mm -hmm. I have hand sanitizer in my pocket. I have my wallet in the back. And it's just, I'm honestly, I'm not, I'm not kidding around. It's, it's, a, it's a hardship for people to go shopping for larger families to walk around with 15 of these bags in your pocket. And, you know, that's number one. Number two is that people that are in apartment buildings and have many seniors, just like every district um, across the city, that use um, the bags to throw out the trash in the chute. So what, what do you expect them to do? Uh, number one, and if you have an answer uh, to that, have you done outreach to people in living in buildings who are throwing the trash into a chute uh, to prevent them from throwing loose trash uh, down because they can't afford to um, um, Well, I, to reiterate, there are some exclusions, right? So there are exemptions if you are receive SNAP assistance, WIC assistance, any I future understand. Let's say program, above that threshold. Right, above that threshold. Might be above. This is a behavior change, and that is something that every city that's gone through this um, switch over to either a ban or a fee or a hybrid has had to experience. And we are absolutely planning to do outreach to help people understand what's the best path for them to manage um, the new reality of shopping, whether you're choosing to use paper bags or whether you are using reusable bags. So again, um, I live in a building, let's say, mm -hmm. right? So I live in a building and I have to throw my trash down the chutes. What is your recommendation now? You'll use a bag of some kind if you choose to. What bags? Right? 
it depends on if you have a stash of bags. If you have, um, I don't have. Bags I don't have a stash of bags. There are, there I have are, nothing in my house. Right. I have nothing in my apartment, and I have trash. Right. I want to. So put there are kitchen bags. There are kitchen the bags that you can purchase. You know, tell for your trash can. Um, that is an option, and. Um, there will that, be that, because, that becomes now expensive for people that are right above the threshold, especially who don't get the free bags. So there has to be some type of solution for people to live in buildings, and that's not a solution to tell them that now you have to pay for trash bags, which is plastic too, but now you have to pay for trash bags, which, which are kind of expensive. So does sanitation have a solution um, for people living in buildings? To throw, to throw out the trash. Are you giving away three ba free bags to people who uh, reside in the apartment buildings who use uh, those compactors? There are, uh, not all bags are banned. So there is that option as well. So you have, if you are purchase produce, if you purchase bulk goods, um, there are sort of produce bags that are available. But we are, essentially we are committed to working with buildings to helping people understand um, what this shift means and what are the best opportunities to change I, I understand, behavior. but I just want to know what the solution is. You're, 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 you're going to try to change people's, uh, the way people um, use bags <clears throat> and prevent them from using plastic. But what is the solution? That's all I want to know. What is the solution for people to live in the building? I have tons of trash in my house, right? And if, you, if you're going to tell me that we have um, bags because we buy meat, so we have a couple of bags you know, in, in our apartment, that's not a solution to people that consume a lot of trash. So what, do you, what is sanitation doing to prevent uh, people from throwing out loose trash down the chute, and this is just going to bring in more mice, rats, roaches? There has to be a solution. So we're voting on something to ban plastic bags, but there has to be some type of a solution. I, I haven't heard anything yet. So. We're not going to give out free garbage bags, if that's what you're asking. I'm, no. Um, so what is the solution? And, that's all and, I want to know. And the question on the table today is not whether or not we're banning plastic bags. That's happening March 1st, 2020, Correct. regardless. That was a state law. Correct. Um, so I think there, there are sort of two answers. One is if you're, if you're generating as much waste as, as you're saying, you're probably not just using single-use plastic bags to dispose of it today. If you are, there are still going to be bags left. Um, anytime you have takeout, for example, anytime you get food delivered, um, there are there are several categories of exempt bags. People that live on a fixed income above the threshold who cannot afford to buy takeout, who cook at home. In one second, Brent. Let me just finish. I just want a solution. I have well, a solution. That's why I'm. Gonna... No, I bet the, you want to testify. We'll sway you in. <laughs> so, but, I want. Um, so go ahead. Go ahead. But finish your finish your statement, and if they're not giving you a suffice answer, then we'll move on to the next question and you'll talk to them afterwards. That's so if there's no solution, just tell me there's no solution right now and you're going to work on it. But I just want to hear if you have any answers because now that it's going into effect, what these people are going to do living in a building, in an apartment building. I think there are several possible solutions. And okay. what we want to do is help folks understand um, what might work best for them. So this is something we're committed to doing. I mean, we're happy to talk with you more about that. Do you know how many people live in apartment buildings in the city? That you're going to do outreach to? And you're going to have to visit each apartment to see how they consume their trash and how much trash they consume. I mean, can we ask? Um, so I'm going to try to help here to find a, a, a place where. Can you talk about other cities that have done this work? Um, what seems to be, it, what, are these hardships, uh, have they been a significant problem to the city? Um, in, in so much so that an elected official would want to overturn, let's say, a ban on plastic bags or paper bags. We have seen that there is a period of time where intensive outreach is required um, to help people understand, um, you know, the new reality of either a fee or a ban on bags. And um, but we, what most cities, in the research we've done, um, the shift in behavior has been relatively quick, and there's been a significant reduction in the use of, of bags. Um, so the, the stats show that people have reduced the use of those bags. Again, it doesn't answer the question. I'm, I'm sorry, Chair. So people have reduced the amount of bags they are using. Mm -hmm. I believe you, and I'm sure you're correct. But when we implement a law that goes into effect, we need to have solutions. 
beforehand. I have constituents emailing me, calling me, who live in apartment buildings who have to throw trash down a chute. Mm -hmm. Now, if they don't have any bags, they cannot afford to buy takeout. Uh, they buy limited amount of meat, right? So they have very few bags, plastic bags, in the apartment. Now, they have a large family. They consume trash. How do they get rid of the trash and throw it down the chute? They, well, that's all I, I want to know. So, so this is going to be the last. That's the, the last. We're going to move on. We don't have a clock, but I want to just respect time and allow for council members to ask questions. But I, I guess, um, council member Deutsch, uh, and I'm not the city, um, but you're asking for a solution to a problem, uh, to, to a problem that you're, you're creating or, or you're assuming exists. Um, it's about changing behavior. People learn how to adapt and not use single-use plastic bags in supermarkets and so forth. They use these and figure out another solution. Um, no one person is going to collapse into financial hardship over the, the, the having to purchase um, a ten pack of bags in in, in the store, um, but that's what we're saying. You're going to change behavior. That is what we're asking, um, and we are. This is a solution. I, I want to be clear. We have a solution to a crisis related to climate change and these plastic bags that are uh, on are a burden on the city of New York, where we're paying twelve million dollars to have to recycle them. Um, so what we're dealing with here is climate change. Long term, we're starting to address an issue in a real way. So I, I understand your question. They're not going to be able to give you the answer you want because the answer you want is that they're going to give away free bags. The solution That's not is the answer I want. You're gonna, they're going to have to buy bags. No. Deutsch. They're going to have to buy bags. Okay. So I just want to end up um, by saying that um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that we should not, that we should use plastic bags. And I support the environment. But, and it's not something I'm making up. You can't, be, you can't do both. And, right? and That's what we're trying to say. And it's not something that I'm making up that people in building. So I'm just asking that. Uh, people who live in apartment buildings who feel it's an issue, since I'm not making this up, should please email and call their elected officials and voice their concerns to their uh, respective elected officials and let them know if you have a problem um, getting rid of the trash uh, if you live in an apartment building and getting the trash down the chutes. So if you have any issues, please reach out to your elected officials and let them know your concerns. This way, everyone knows that I'm not making this up. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Brad. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll just point a few things out uh, for my colleague. Uh, Councilmember Deutsch, f first of all, I have some websites where you can buy the single-use bags for about a penny each, one penny each. So for people who really are committed to using the small single-use bag size plastic bag for their disposition down the chute instead of one of the larger kitchen sized plastic bags that you know that people often put in their kitchen bags about a penny each you could get a 500 roll for 50 bucks that'll probably last you the whole year about a penny each uh, Los Angeles County actually did a survey after they got rid of plastic bags and they found that that households had to spend on average about $15 a year on trash bags, just like people have to spend, you know, a little money on all their household needs so that we could avoid. But what's really clear is the way the system currently works, there's like a hundred single use plastic bags for every one that gets used to get thrown down the chute and the waste is just too much. So, but finally, what I'd say is the state has already caused this problem. So we are debating today whether to put a five cent fee on paper bags. The state has already banned the plastic bags that people uh, need to put down their chutes. So the challenge that your constituents will be facing, uh, that they won't get them for free in very large volumes from the store, has already been created by the state legislation. There are these very reasonable alternative products that people can use. Hopefully, they'll actually be able to reduce waste overall um, and also have things in recycling and composting. Um, it's not nothing but it's a pretty modest sacrifice for the gains that we'll be making as a city. All right, uh, Councilman Valone. Thank you, Chair. So I'm on the belief we're not saving the human species with another fine, so I defer, I change my comments from other council members. I'm not a big fan of the fines. No one in my district's a big fan of the fines. I've not gotten one phone call that said, yay, thank you for fining me another five cents. Um, no one's in opposition to plastic bags. I have an issue with brown bags. I have an issue with another five cent fee. Um, I have issue, my seniors, my veterans, my homeowners, they're just done, they're done. So why could we not have started this with a ban? Why did we have to go immediately to a fine? 
started. Why couldn't we roll this out by saying it, no use of brown paper bags in the city of New York? Why did we have to include a fine like other jurisdictions have done? There were multiple years of, of negotiations about how to handle single-use carryout bags in New York City, and there were discussions of bans, there were discussion of fines, and um, where the 2016 legislation ended up was um, a consideration of, of, and I guess fine wouldn't be the word I would use, um, a fee. And, um, Call what you want, it's five cents. Correct, yep. And at the state level, um, there was a determination that um, the direction they wanted to take was to do a, a ban on single-use plastic bags and then allow for a fee by local jurisdictions on paper bags. And well, then, then we, took that, we took that upon ourselves. Yeah, so I think, yes. and this goes back to the conversation that we had with Councilmember Lander earlier. What we've seen in other jurisdictions, and we're trying to avoid this, is that just a ban on single-use plastic bags is not enough because that causes the substitution effect, that causes people to use heavier bags in very large volumes. Um, and that that's not consistent. I, I don't our, think that's enough. I, we can agree to results. disagree. I just don't believe that's the answer. I don't believe the answer anymore is constantly adding a fine or a fee to get people to do something. Our kids are leaders in our schools. Our schools are recycling. They use their brown paper bags. They take them. They separate them. They're taught by their parents, their teachers, their leaders to take those steps. That's what we are. That's what we should be doing. We should be bringing change voluntarily by doing it the right way. And if it didn't work over a period of time, you say, you know, we tried. It didn't work. We didn't do that. And we're not doing that here. I, and, I, and we're the largest city in the world and we're the best city in the world and we can do better. I don't think we have to start with a fine. And I, I would disagreed with this the first time. Plastic bags are different. There's no one on this planet that's ever going to argue we should use plastic bags. Brown paper bags, is, we're going into a different animal here in a recyclable animal. And I, that, I would that's going to be my point. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that, um, thank you for that point. And I, I would say that we've been uh, we've had a recycling program, and we've been aggressively working towards maximizing the recycling of paper um, for three decades now. And what we're looking for now is to focus on the reduce part of our, of our waste management goals. And we have learned from other jurisdictions that a, a modest five cent fee um, does induce behavior change that reduces the use of these paper bags. Um, and you don't, the, the goal is not to have people spend five cents on paper bags. The goal is to have them switch to use reusable. I get that, but we've never banned in New York City. So we've, we're go jumping to something without trying something else. Just having a recycling program is one thing. Another thing is to say we are, as of August 1st, banning brown paper bags, and we're going to try this on a, a trial basis, a different type of ex rollout period. We're not doing that. So my opposition is to that, not to the not the goal. We all want to be zero waste. I think we should have taken steps before we did it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Can, can you clarify, because uh, what Councilman Vallone is asking, why does the city not look to ban um, as opposed to another fee? Does the state give us the authority to ban paper bags if we wanted to? So the state law um, takes action specifically on plastic bags. Uh, it, it also says that the that cities and counties across the state can implement a fee if they choose. Um, it, it is sort of unclear on, on other actions that you can take regarding paper bags. It, it clearly doesn't restrict us from requiring that people recycle those paper bags, which has been required since the recycling law took effect uh, back in the early 90s. Um, and you know, as Commissioner Anderson said, that's been in effect for 30 years. We're still only recycling 45%. I guess what I'm talking about is the authority are we preempted by the state to ban paper bags? So they didn't let us ban paper, uh, plastic bags. If we were to go through a process, another very difficult process in the council to ban paper bags, um, does this new uh, authority that's given to us by the state allow us to do that? Does it give us that authority? We are not preempted from banning paper bags. Okay, so that's what I wanted to, that's the question I guess folks were asking, or the Councilman Valone was asking. Um, I have a couple more questions. Does uh, the fee on paper bags have uh, happen co uh, concurrently with the plastic bag, uh, the, the plastic ban? The, in the pre-considered um, bill, uh, the paper bag fee would go into effect on the same day as the Good. state plastic Good. bag ban. Great. And uh, what can community groups do if they want to get bags and start the process of, of uh, giving them out and 
churches, places of worship, and so yep. forth. They're, they should contact um, Department of Sanitation and call 311, and they'll be routed to us. And we have a, a team of folks who will actively distribute bags um, to these groups, and we, we welcome uh, local groups helping us distribute bags. Okay, thank you. Uh, We've also been joined by Councilmember Costa Constantinides, who's also one of the newest members of the Sanitation and Solid Waste uh, Committee. Welcome, Costa. And I think we're, do you have any questions, Costa? Or, I think we're, we're good. Thank you so much for your time and your testimony. Thank you. We have three panels. So we're going to go with uh, Eric Goldstein, Melissa Yashan, Adriana Espinoza, and Jordan Christensen. Let's get first, first group. We're going to put a two-minute clock. Thank you, sir. And also, uh, I'm sorry, we have a whole bunch of, pl of bags of, uh, um, are those for like, can we give them away? All right. So can we just start the process of everyone at least taking one bag in the aisle? But, but, huh? but, oh, good, good. But Keep them. Mr. Chair, don't use them to throw the garbage down the chute. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, imagine seeing the orange bags in a, in a, in a city's truck. No. Um, <laughs> But we can, yeah, start giving them out and then leave the rest there and we'll figure it out. We'll send them to Deutsche's house. All right. Uh, Melissa, you want to start? Sure. Um, good morning, or actually afternoon. My name is Melissa Yashan and I'm a senior staff attorney in the Environmental Justice Program at New York Lawyers for the Public Interest. NOPI has advocated and litigated for environmental justice in New York City for more than two decades. NOPI's environmental justice program has long focused on the detrimental effects of the city's waste system, and I have worked in the area of waste regulation for more than five years. Um, we, NOPI has been a member of the Bagot Coalition for several years, and we strongly supported the BYO bag bill that the council passed a few years ago, so we are encouraged to see the city finally on the precipice of seeing meaningful reduction in harmful waste streams like disposable bags. Thank you to Chairman Reynoso for holding this hearing and to the sponsors of this important bill, Council Members Lander and Chin, and a special welcome to the Sanitation Committee to Council Members Chin and Constantinides. We are thrilled that the state has passed a ban on plastic bags, which are a scourge to our environment on many levels. However, all precedent indicates that to truly reduce single-use disposable bag use by consumers, the statewide ban should be accompanied by a fee on other single-use bags, such as paper bags. Thanks to the pre-considered intro bill being heard today, New York City has the opportunity to join other green cities in ensuring that the statewide plastic bag ban be accompanied by a single-use paper bag fee to truly redu reduce our waste as a city, as well as continue the efforts to reduce our carbon footprint. As we heard, plastic bags alone make up about 2% of the city's residential waste stream, according to DSNY, and single-use carry-out bags account for 1.7 tons of residential garbage each week. This amounts to 91,000 tons of plastic and paper carry-out bags each year, costing the city a whopping $12.5 million annually to dispose of this material. Single-use bags are a particularly harmful part of our waste stream, despite making up a relatively small portion of it, largely due to harmful byproducts and the high amount of fossil fuel-based energy used in manufacturing these bags, greenhouse gas emissions from the production, transport, and ultimate disposal of high volumes of these bags, plastic bags detrimental effect on machinery at both putrescible and recycling facilities, the litter and visual, I am not even halfway done, <laughs> The litter and visual clutter from the lightweight plastic and paper bags that are blown out of garbage trucks and dumpsters ending up in our streets, parks, trees, and waterways. Communities of color and low-income communities who have historically borne the brunt of our waste processing systems can attest to the particularly harmful side effects of having seemingly never-ending amounts of plastic and paper bags in our waste stream. Not only do they require more diesel truck trips through their neighborhoods, but because these polluting trucks queue and idle in their neighborhood streets on their way to dumping, these lightweight bags litter the sidewalks, streets, parks, and playgrounds far more often in these communities 
um, than in communities where garbage trucks idling are not such a frequent sight. Residents of these neighborhoods are more enthusiastic than ever to adapt their habits, and in fact, reusable bag giveaways over the past few years have been more successful in these communities than others, and the rest of the city should follow suit. Um, I'm just going to skip ahead and say I know you have heard and will hear even more supportive statistics. There are some stats in my, in my written testimony, so I won't go through all of it here. Suffice it to say that today's pre-considered intro proposing to impose a modest five-cent fee on single-use and carry-out paper bags in combination with the recent statewide ban on single-use plastic bags has the potential to drastically improve our city's environmental record, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and bring us significantly closer to our goal of achieving zero waste. We strongly support this legislation and again thank the Sanitation Committee, the City Council, and DSNY for being here today to ensure that we enact the most sensible and effective policies together for a greener and cleaner New York City for all our residents. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for, for the, cutting for the short. full story. You can see the written testimony. Thank you, and and it'll and the full testimony will be written into this into the testimony for sure into the state record. Record. Thank you. Jeez. Uh, Good afternoon. Chairman Renoso, welcome to Council Members Chin and Constantinides. We're glad to have you here. And of course, to Council Member Ladner. Uh, Lander, my name is Eric Goldstein uh, from the Natural Resources Defense Council. While plastic bag litter and pollution has properly been receiving a lot of attention recently, the problems associated with billions of paper bags used by New York City residents should not be overlooked. The manufacture, transportation, and disposal of paper bags are indeed significant. Processing rigid stands of timber into flexible, printable, smooth, glossy, or absorbent paper requires intensive chemical and mechanical effort after a tree is harvested. The virgin pulp and paper industry is one of the world's largest generators of hazardous air pollution, surface water pollution, sludge, and solid wastes. The transportation of timber and finished paper products hundreds of miles from forests to retail outlets consumes large amounts of energy and is one of the many aspects of paper production that has significant adverse environmental consequences. For this and other reasons, jurisdictions across the country have sought to discourage the use and disposal of both paper and plastic single-use carry-out bags. From California to Chicago to Washington, D.C., localities are rightly adopting policies that encourage the use of reusables by placing fees or restrictions on paper bags as well as plastics, and that's what the council wisely did in 2016 until it was preempted by state law. The proposed legislation, and this is important, includes significant protections to ensure that the impacts of this bill don't fall adversely on no-income New Yorkers. Consistent with state law, the new statute would exempt all SNAP and WIC food stamp shoppers from having to pay the five-cent fee. Of course, we hope these shoppers will, over time, bring reusable sacks, even if they're not required to to pay the fee for paper bags. The state legislation also authorizes the city to obtain two out of every five cents collected from the purchase of paper bags at point of sale and to use such funds for the acquisition and distribution of reusable bags with priority given to low and fixed income communities. This provision will help ensure that every New Yorker who needs help will have access to reusable carryout bags at no additional cost. And that's even without or even before the uh, uh, provisions that were discussed by the sanitation department to make these beautiful uh, orange bags available to New Yorkers. So uh, we support this legislation strongly. We thank council members Chin and Lander, along with the other sponsors and you, Chairman Reynoso, for advancing it. We think that the questions raised by council member Deutsch can be addressed and we'd be happy to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just texted him and he says, yeah, he still wants an answer. So we'll see. <laughs> Um, but thank you. Appreciate it. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Adriana Espinosa. I'm the director of the New York City program at the New York League of Conservation Voters. NYLCV represents over 31,000 members in New York City, and we're committed to advancing a sustainability, a sustainability agenda that will make our people, our neighborhoods, and our economy healthier and more resilient. NYLCV enthusiastically supports the pre-considered introduction on, on paper bags, which aims to reduce the number of single-use bag waste in New York City. Carry-out bags are not free. Every New Yorker pays when our trees, streets, playgrounds, beaches, and waterways become littered with bags. Taxpayers shell out $12 million a year to truck these disposable bags to landfills at a time when we can use these dollars for so many other things. We have become a disposable society, whether it's grocery bags, shopping bags, utensils, cups, or takeout containers. 
We use them once and we throw them out. The average disposable bag, the, the use of, an, of a disposable bag is average just a few minutes, but the toll on the environment lasts for decades. It's time for New Yorkers to stand up and say enough is enough. We can and must do better. Now that New York State has acted and banned single-use plastic bags, we need, we need New York City to tackle paper bags so that we don't substitute one kind of bag for another. Switching from plastic to paper creates a different set of issues. Compared to plastic, paper bags are more carbon intensive to produce and much heavier. While easier to recycle, soiled paper bags cannot be recycled and most people do not divert them to composting. They are much more expensive for retailers. All this adds up to good reasons why we should move away from single-use bags and onto reusable bags. The pre-considered bill by council members Chin and Lander would place a five cent fee on each paper bag provided to a customer. Customers who bring their own bags will not be charged. Customers who do not take a carry-out bag will not be charged. Customers who pay using public benefits such as SNAP, at WIC, SNAP and WIC will not be charged. Implementing a fee on paper bags would encourage New Yorkers to bring their own reusable bags. It's not about penalizing shoppers, it's about providing a signal that bags are not free to our society and encouraging consumers to bring their own. Almost done. Um, banning thin plastic bags coupled with placing a fee on all other carryout bags is the gold standard for policy in addressing carryout bag waste. This is a policy that is already in place and successful in many jurisdictions across the country, including statewide in California and locally in Seattle. A fee will cause shoppers to take a pause. A decision at the register will go a long way to the dent on the 10 million single-use bags that we use a year. Um, we, we thank council members Chen and Lander for their longtime leadership on this important issue, and we look forward to working with you and the entire city council on a paper bag fee legislation in New York City, a top uh, priority for my organization and a future scorecard bill. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jordan Christensen and I'm representing Citizens Campaign for the Environment. So we've worked for over 10 years throughout the state and the country to reduce plastic pollution. And first off, I want to thank you and specifically this committee for your previous leadership on this issue. I don't think we would be sitting here talking about a New York State plastic bag ban without you. And we would like to thank you for so quickly tackling the issue of paper bags after the budget um, came out. So. We are here to strongly support uh, the additional fee on paper bags. Um, and of course, any successful bring your own bag law doesn't want you switching from plastic to paper. The real goal is to go disposable to reusable. And we aren't seeing the sort of consumer behavior change that we would like to see, even in other municipalities in New York that only had plastic bag bans. So we started about 10 years ago on Long Island and in Westchester uh, with municipalities banning plastic bags. And by and large, we weren't seeing the sort of reusable bag increases that we were hoping for. You're seeing increases in waste and people are going to the checkout and they're still getting a free bag. So there's no real incentive to do any better. At the same time in Suffolk County, um, in the first year of their plastic and paper bag fee, we've already seen an 80% reduction in both plastic and paper. Um, and one of the things we were a little surprised by is not only that it increased reusable bags, but also it very greatly increased, number one, people who just choose not to take a bag because you have to get the question, do you need a bag for the first time? And that's what we want to see with paper. We don't just want to see you know, people packaging paper without thinking about it. It also greatly reduces the amount of sort of double bagging and excessive bagging. So even if people are choosing to pay the five cents, which we absolutely hope that no one does, um, you're still going to see a far decrease in the sort of single-use bag behavior. Um, so we don't even need to take the lessons of Honolulu and Chicago and San Francisco that we talked about previously. We can just look at the rest of the state and see that the ban fee combo is absolutely the best way to move forward. And we urge you to uh, move forward quickly so that we can uh, set this into law and hopefully have other counties and cities around the state follow your lead. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Any questions for the panel? Councilmember Constantinides. Hi, uh, Chairman Reynoso, thank you for your gracious uh, 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 welcome today. I, I'm very uh, glad to be back. Uh, I'm back on the Sanitation Committee after my brief hiatus. <laughs> Um, but uh, I wanted to thank uh, all of you for your strong advocacy for a cleaner, greener, uh, sustainable New York City and planet. So thank you all for all that you do. And I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor to the bill if I can, if I'm not already. Thank you very much. I also want to thank you for the work you do. Very rarely do we have meetings uh, or hearings related to how the city council is 
quickly moving forward with like an environmental issue and that you guys need to catch up to us um, when it came to like how we pushed it. So it's a, it's a day to celebrate um, and, and really talk about how members, especially the leadership, I want to give Corey Johnson a lot of a, a lot of love for the fact that he thought this was an issue that was important that we need to address urgently. And um, it's, it wasn't up for discussion. So I really appreciate that. And um, thank you for your continued fight. And hopefully you guys also see this as something. We don't need to be out there in the hot summer days trying to fight for the five cents. It's actually going to happen, hopefully. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all for it. Okay. So we have uh, Jacqueline Altman from the Manhattan Suave is here. There she is. <laughs> To see Ashan, I, I think, yeah, she is. Shine Ray Sal and uh, D. Jenny Romer. Yeah. Of course. And uh, before we start with this panel, I just want to, uh, again, acknowledge the work that Jenny Romer has done, introduced me to the issues of bags and their harm, well, and how harmful they are in a, in a serious way, um, and has been the front lines of this work. So I just want to thank you for the work that you've done um, um, personally. Uh, and would love for you to start with your testimony, if you can. Thank you. Thank you for asking me to testify. And I wanted to specifically thank you, Chair Reynoso, and Council Members uh, Chin and Lander uh, for really listening to me um, and really having good conversations about the intricacies of these laws over the last few years. So thank you for that. My name is Jenny Romer. I'm a lawyer, and I'm a national authority on carry-out bag policy. I'm the founder of PlasticBagLaws.org, and I'm the coordinator of the Bag at NYC Coalition that was mentioned earlier. I provided pro bono counsel to council members Lander and Chin regarding the bag policy. Uh, in, in that capacity, I helped develop the five cent uh, carryout bag fee in 2016 that was overturned by the state. And today, your committee is uh, considering legislation that would really get New York City back on track to implement an effective carryout bag law. How I got involved with bag laws was volunteering for two years uh, with the San Francisco Board of Supervisors on redrafting their original plastic bag legislation to address the paper bag loophole. So this is deja vu. Um, so uh, I worked with them to add a 10 cent, minimum 10 cent fee in that case uh, on all carry out bags, paper and uh, thicker bags qualifying as reusable as well as compostable. And we didn't see a significant uh, increase in reusable bag use in San Francisco until after that 10 cent fee when it was in place. Uh, I've been researching bag laws for over a decade and I found that the best legislative practice is to include a fee on all available checkout bags. To date, 376 carryout bag laws have been adopted in the United States. Data from those laws shows that including a fee component is incredibly effective in changing consumer behavior by encouraging customers to bring their own bags and straight bans, like what would be in place if this fee were, were not to be adopted, would result in customers simply switching to the bag that's available for free. I worked with a group at um, NYU of scientists to put together a summary of all of the effectiveness data that we know of. Uh, it's available on my website, plasticbaglaws.org. And with <coughs> Governor Cuomo's state ba statewide ban on plastic bags, uh, that was a monumental step forward to address single-use plastic. But uh, that ban was a disappointment uh, in that, among other things, it failed to include a fee component on paper. And I urge you to opt in to the paper bag fee. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jenny. You want it? Sure. Good afternoon, Chair Renault. 
turn on the button. Good afternoon, Chairman Reynoso and members of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste. Thank you for your leadership on this effort over these many years. I'm Jackie Ottman, Chair of the Manhattan Solid Waste Advisory Board, the MSWAB. It's a volunteer citizens advisory board dedicated to helping New York City achieve its zero waste goals. We advise the Manhattan Borough President, City Council, City Administration, and others on policies and programs regarding the development, promotion, and operation of the city's waste prevention, reuse, and recycling programs. We're board comprised of solid waste management industry professionals, waste reduction and diversion consultants, sustainability professionals, and concerned citizens were appointed by the Manhattan Borough President's Office. For Out of respect for everyone's time, I'm just going to cut to the chase here. We applaud the legislation introduced by Council Members Lander, Chin, Traeger, and Renoso, and under consideration today because it is designed with the goal of reducing the number of single-use paper bags in the waste stream by placing a five-cent fee on such bags, thus incentivizing customers to bring their own reusable bags or not take a bag at all. For example, such fees show, have shown to be a major driver encouraging people to reduce their use of such bags. For example, Washington, D.C.'s five-cent charge on paper and plastic carryout bags went into effect in 2010 and has led to a 60% drop in overall single bags and a corresponding drop in bag litter. Fees at the point of sale are important because they make consumers more mindful about whether they need a bag for their purchase. In addition, it is of course expected that some portion of consumers will still use paper bags as an alternative and pay that five cent fee. These paper bags, as well as many of the exempt bags, represent an important messaging opportunity. They are natural billboards. The swab recommends that they be printed as appropriate with messages to support recycling, organics diversion, and reuse in New York City. We urge the City Council to requ consider requiring or at least incentivizing such communications as an important comp component to the outreach efforts around New York City's zero waste programs. Thank you for the opportunity to submit this testimony. You say the communication on the bags? Yes. Oh, okay, maybe we could do a competition and we could figure out a way to... It can be I, totally voluntary and something that's altruistically provided oh, by retailers and the manufacturers. Oh, oh, encouraging them, not, no, not only the city. Um, and before, Bradley, there was one more birthday that we haven't celebrated and we've just found out that, or oh, I just found out, Local Law 19, New York City's recycling law, turned 30 years on Sunday, April 14th. So it's another birthday that was significant. Okay, anyway. terrific. I was, whoever whoever sent point. me that down, thank you very much. Uh, it's, a, it's a good story, but thank Great. you for your testimony. You're welcome. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much, council members. Uh, my name is Tausif Asan. I'm the Civic Engagement Coordinator at NYPERG, and I will be delivering this testimony on behalf of our Environmental Policy Director, Liz Moran. NYPERG is a nonpartisan, not-for-profit research and advocacy organization. Consumer protection, environmental preservation, public health, healthcare quality, higher education affordability, and governmental reforms are our principal areas of concern. Um, the full written testimony has been submitted for the record, so I'm going to abridge it because many of the points have already been made. Uh, like many of the advocates and council members here, we applaud the gov uh, governor's decision to include a plastic ban bag in the uh, budget. Um, however, it does not go far enough because as we've seen, without a paper bag fee, uh, customers tend to switch over to paper bags, which have their own adverse effects on the environment. Often people mistakenly think that paper bags are a better choice for our environment, but this is a myth. Negative environmental impacts of paper bags include paper bag production may require hazardous chemicals that create algae blooms, contaminating drinking water and contributing to acid rain. Paper bag production wastes clean water. It takes a gallon of water to produce a single paper bag. Paper bags are resource intensive. The production of paper bags involve clear cutting forests around the globe, which is one of the lead causes of climate change. And it also takes large amounts of fossil fuel based energy to transport paper bags because they are so heavy. Uh, many of the advocates here have spoken to how paper bag fees around the country have worked. So I'm not going to repeat that point, uh, but I am going to um, raise it again. They've worked around the country. Um, I am going to also end with uh, the concern that people have raised about low income communities disproportionately being impacted uh, by this fee. And I'm here to refute that. 
Uh, lower income communities adjust to the fee effectively. In Richmond, California, customers of a discount grocery store chain increased their rate of bringing reusable bags by 48 percentage points. Plastic bag fees immediately reduced curbside litter. Immediate reductions in litter were observed in San Jose, California, Austin, Texas, and Ireland. And the air quality and public health are improved by a reduction in waste disposal. As waste processing facilities are disproportionately located near low income communities, these communities suffer the most from their presence due to toxic bribe products in the air and waste. And of course, as council members have mentioned, uh, those who qualify for low-income programs are exempt from this. New York is heralded as an environmental leader in both the state and the country, and that's why we need to follow up with this paper bag fee in order to follow through on that reputation. Thank you. Thank you. If we were going to make a horror movie about bags, Nyperg will be in the front lines of the writers writers group that we would need for that. I <laughs> yeah, we can promise you that much. Yeah, I know. You scared me. Um, but we have one more testimony? Yes. Hi, my name is Shinri Ta, and I'm a... Um, I have my own business called Commit Green, and what we do is we design and manufacture compostable packaging. And I think that a lot of my concerns are we're talking about plastic bags and we're all talking about um, paper bags, but we're missing the point of compostable packaging. Compostable packaging is made from a plant-based resin. And I think where this lies is that I do think that there should be a five cent fee um, implemented on packaging as a whole. But I think that what we're looking at is that there's a whole bigger conversation about the type of marking that you can put on the types of packaging, which then can sort of like lend itself in creating another conversation um, to the end user. And so what we do on our commercial packaging is basically we put education on it. So as our stores and our businesses and, and they kind of purchase from us, they then give out to their end consumers, which then they have the possibility of being able to be educated in such a short amount of time, um, become aware of something different, um, and at that point, kind of move forward with some sort of agenda on their own. And I think that if you had to pay a five cent fee for a bag, you would then be more proactive and possibly repurposing it to, you know, recycle your food waste, you know, and then you wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be as easy for you to be sort of like tossing things in the trash. So. That's it. Thank you. I agree. And it is about building habits and culture. And I always go back to MetroCards. It was a big deal when they were going to start charging the $1 fee. I've had the same MetroCard for, I think, like four years. Um, so it's just habits. And, and we can change people's habits. We're, we're, that, we're human that way as well. Um, so thank you so much for your testimony as well. I think we have one more panel to go before we're done. So, again, thank you for your testimony. Miriam Gordon. Matt Gove, I think I know, um, Paul Darby, and Debbie Lee Cohen. That should be everyone. Do want to make sure everyone else? Is there anyone else that wants to testify that hasn't submitted a, an appearance card? No? Okay, thank you. Want to start? Yeah. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> I wrote some testimony, but it's pretty boring, so I'll just drop through some things here. My name is Matt Gove. I'm from Surfrider Foundation, and uh, I'm here representing the New York City chapter of Surfrider, which is all volunteers located right here in New York City. Uh, I want to take the, the chance to thank those volunteers. Um, you might have met Patrick Diamond. He's been doing a ton of work on this. Nikita Scott, John Coughlin. I mean, this has been going back five or six years, as you guys know. Um, and just want to thank uh, also the, ch the chair and everybody here. You guys are kind of the dream team of bags here in New York City, so we're excited, very excited. Um, we work across the country and uh, been working on bag laws for about 10 years. And uh, we just came out with a toolkit with working with Jenny. And the main point of the toolkit is like, you have to have a fee. So I think everyone's got that down. Um, that has to happen. The governor uh, only got us halfway here, so we've got to finish the deal. Um, you've heard everything else. So I'm just going to say, uh, last time I was in D.C., I was there for a trip. I was in my old neighborhood, and um, 
uh, I actually used to live there when the, the, the bill passed in 2009, and it was amazing. So I was like, oh, I wonder what it's going to be like. And I was in line. It's about 10 people in front of me, and I realized I was the only one without my bags because I was traveling. So I stuck all my food in my luggage. <laughs> but I was amazed that I was the only person uh, in the whole line without my bags. So it's, it's real. It happens. People figure it out. And uh, we're going to figure it out in New York City thanks to your guys' leadership. Thank you. Thank you. And you're a Surf Rider Foundation? Surf Rider. Okay, you guys have a great story, um, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. Okay. Yes. Chair Reynoso and members of the committee, my name is Miriam Gordon. I'm the program director for Upstream. We are a national NGO whose mission is to end our throwaway culture and focus on reduce and reuse. Uh, we are, I am from San Francisco, a former New Yorker from San Francisco. We are hiring staff here in New York City, so you will be hearing more from us on this issue. Um, but I'm pleased to say that I, I worked with Jenny early on in uh, California. I am a veteran of the uh, plastic bag ban and other waste reduction issues. I first started working on this in 2006 when I was um, a mem uh, worked for the state of California and wrote an action plan. Banning single-use plastic bags was one of the five top priorities. And then I joined the NGO community in 2007, worked on the first plastic bag ban slash paper uh, fee in San Francisco, my hometown. And uh, together in coalition with others, we've uh, enacted 150 local bag ban plus uh, bag ban slash fee ordinances and the statewide California law. Um, so I just want to support the comments that um, uh, Chair Reynoso and Council Member Lander have made. Uh, without the fee on the paper bags, we are basically switching one environmental harm from the petroleum-based products to uh, paper products, which is not a good thing to do in the era of climate change. We need our trees. Uh, they're essential. This is about reducing and, and the behavior change. And the fee ha has been, we have been conducting research Research on uh, all of the laws enacted worldwide. 53% of the world's population lives in a place where plastic bags have been banned or there's a charge. And for those that are collecting data, um, we can see an 80% reduction in the use of single-use plastic bags and an 80% reduction on average, just looking at all the data, an 80% reduction in bags in the environment. Uh, so very much support the highest fee possible. And I just want to uh, close by saying we are innovating in the Bay Area, and we'd like to work with you on new laws um, because um, the, as, the, uh, as Bridget Anderson mentioned, bags are 2% of the waste stream. But what is the rest of what you see in, in the garbage uh, littering the streets of Manhattan and in the waste stream? It's mostly food and beverage packaging. We have new policies coming from the Bay Area. You are going to see a wave this year of policies that tell food service businesses that they can't serve in disposable foodware um, and that start applying this idea of the charge for takeout disposables, like the uh, bag charge, to other kinds of disposables in food service. So would very much like to work with you on getting to the other 90% of the waste stream, which is food and beverage packaging. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hello, I'm Debbie Lee Cohen, um, executive director and founder of Cafeteria Culture, founded as Styrofoam Out of Schools. I'd first like to thank you, Chair Reynoso, Council Member Chin, and Council Member Lander, for the incredible work that you've done for the city. You are heroes to our kids and our programs. You really are. And I'm sorry, I'm usually here with a group of at least 10 kids, if not 200, and we didn't have enough notice to bring them today. So on the back of my testimony, I um, copied some videos that you can see so that you can hear the students' voices. We've been working on this issue with our students as part of our Plastic Free Waters program since 2012. And I just want to, rather than read through my testimony, most of the comments I have to make have been made already. But in 2015, we got our first um, EPA Trash Free Waters grant, EPA Region 2. It was a discretionary grant, and we led the program with eighth graders in East Flatbush, Brooklyn at um, MS246 Walt Whitman. We usually start our program with a Socratic discussion. And the very first day, I thought, 
did we make the biggest mistake ever? We are going to fail with this program because in the Socratic discussion, the students actually equated their plastic bag with Wi-Fi. And by the end of the discussion, and even the teacher who had been to Washington, D.C. and said, you know, he tried to convince them otherwise, they all moved to one side pretty much, except for like two or three. But the reason why I'm telling this story, and I am here to support the fee and to support your quick enactment of it, is that these students changed their minds. And they changed their minds after a period of really only two months. And why did they change their minds? Because of the why. They began to understand by collecting data on the streets how much, what the percentage was of their street litter of plastic bags. Then they went to Jamaica Bay and they saw how much of the litter at Jamaica Bay that was a result of our combined sewer overflow system was also plastic bags. And you can see some of the pictures, excuse me, on the back. And then they also understood the health impacts, not just for wildlife, but for themselves. And as students begin to understand the impacts of microplastics and the toxicity, that plastic is toxic, but also the toxicity of our garbage and that we need to reduce our garbage to protect all of our communities. And by replacing paper, by replacing plastic with paper, we are not doing justice to all of our communities that are on the front line of climate change and are needing our support to really reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Oso and members of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste. Uh, I am Paul Darby. I'm here to speak on behalf of Novamont, who are a world leading company in the sector of compostable bioplastics. Our headquarters are in Italy uh, and we've worked with large European cities to help implement curbside organics collection, but also work with San Francisco and the city of Brookline, Massachusetts. Our US office is based in Connecticut and over the past year I've had the pleasure of working with New York based businesses such as Commit to Green plus New York Waste Management and environmental groups help promote sustainability and zero waste. We do support the proposed fee on paper carryout bags as a proven tool to help reduce a municipality's bag consumption. Although not in the scope of the current intro, we would also propose a certified compostable plastic bag should only be permitted as an alternative to the recently banned traditional plastic bag. We suggest that allowing retailers to offer a certified compostable carryout bag at the same fee as a paper bag, possibly even on a pilot basis in areas where a DSNY residential food waste collection service is offered, would be a game changer in the city's organics programme. As you are aware, the programme faces challenges in gaining participation and has only scratched the surface of the nearly 1 million tonnes of divertible organics that are disposed of each year by NYC residents. In many of the cities you work with, the compostable bag is used as an educational communication tool because it can be clearly labelled to be reused for food scrap collection and disposed of in a New York City's organics residential recycling programme. We have a lot of research based in other big cities to show that making compostable plastic bags widely available at low cost can help significantly increase the residential New York City food scrap participation rates and organics diversion. This strategy has already been proven in major cities across Europe such as Milan where 80% of residential food scraps are diver diverted from landfill to their anaerobic digestion and compost composting facilities with less than 5% contamination. These bags are truly compostable. They break down over time in a compost facility, and they also work in a and some can also work in a backyard compost unit. Biodegradability cannot be used as an excuse to litter, and we would never actually promote these materials as a solution to littering or marine pollution. However, in the worst case scenario where this happens, some compostable products have been proven to break down in soil and marine environments, so have a less resonance and risk over time than conventional plastics. Thank you. And I appreciate your time and thank you for your testimony today. And hopefully we'll be seeing this pass very soon. We actually have one more person. I didn't want to let them sit up there all alone. So do you guys mind entertaining us for two more minutes? Um, we want to call up Dana de Blasio. Um, so she'll be on the edge here. There you go. Thank you. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm here to testify on behalf of NSA, the National Supermarket Association. NSA is a trade association representing about 400 supermarket owners throughout the five boroughs in Long Island. Um, we wanted to just make sure we got something on the record today. While we um, we were actually, NSA was uh, supportive of the ban on the state level, and we're also supportive of what the council is doing with the five cent fee. However, where our concerns come in are around the parameters that the state um, uh, designated with the five cent fee. So paper bags are more expensive to our stores, and we view this very similar to viewing, or how we view the 
bottle bill where there's a handling fee that the stores get for having to do this transaction. So on top of thinking that we should get some percentage or portion of that five cents back to the stores for not only handling this administratively, but also um, because these bags cost us uh, a great deal more than the plastic bags did. And so we just wanted to make sure we got that on the record. Of course, um, encouraging folks to not use the paper bags is something we support because we obviously don't want to provide um, a lot of paper bags. So um, that's, that's, thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. We try to get the we try to get the businesses to keep the money, but the state has changed the way it works. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately, we, our hands are tied, almost uh, literally tied um, when exactly. it comes to that. But I appreciate your, your testimony and your time. And, and that's the end of the hearing. So I want to thank everyone. Um, and I'm looking forward to the passage of this over the next couple of days. Uh, so this meeting is adjourned. I want to hug them. I want to hug them. So proud of you and happy for you.